My name is Ryan Wilcox. Jenkins 2 has some interesting features, uh, one of which is the ability to script a uh, uh, build pipeline in the repository the source code is in uh, using a Jenkins file. This Jenkins file is created in the, the Groovy language. Now if you've inherited a Jenkins project or your local build engineer has said, well, just go make a Jenkins file. Well, you might say, well, I don't know, Groovy. It's a good language, an easy language to learn, or at least to learn the basics of. Um, it's the idea about Groovy is that it's a superset of Java, the way. You could take a .java file and rename it to be .groovy, and the Groovy compiler would compile that and execute that code. Um, so let's see, I've got a Groovy console here in IntelliJ here. Let's write a very Java looking function. <laughs> oh yes, you may notice that uh, in Groovy, the semicolons are optional. You can leave them in there if you wish, or just ignore them. Look, I have Hello World show up on my little console. You may also notice that I I have created this function outside of a class, right? Uh, I don't need to do public or public uh, class my teaching screen cast. Don't need to do that. Uh, one of the features of Groovy is that it will uh, auto create a class for me, essentially. Um, if you're writing more than a couple files of Groovy, like a uh, Spring Boot Groovy project, you'll probably want to stick to the explicit class stuff. But in Jenkins, uh, we are not doing any of that Spring Boot silliness. So we can just write functions here. So this is this is not very very Groovy. Let's add a let's add another s variable here. String. Um, Placement equals new string. Oh wow, I'm getting tired of typing. All right. So Groovy has this concept called def. Uh, def means compiler, take a guess. Here it's really easy. The compiler can infer that this is going to be a string. The placement is going to be a string because it's assigned a val, you know, assigned a string object, right? <coughs> Very easy. Um, I didn't have to type string again. That was really cool. I can also do this, right? I know that I need to pass. Um, Waxing moon, right? I can pass this, and Groovy knows that noun uh, is a string here. It'll do some very basic like type checking noun dot trim right we know this exists from java we know noun dot a method that doesn't not exist that won't work right we'll see that here it'll compile because groovy will not know it won't work but it'll fail at runtime um that is the thing about groovy um in general if the things are obvious, uh, my my method here, my uh, my way I program Groovy is if the ver parameter has a name that makes it blindingly obvious to the humans what thing it is, I'll use def. If it is not obvious, like def uh, b, right? What is b? I don't know. Uh, I can add a type here for the humans, right? I'm um, being kind to my fellow programmers. Um, the compiler doesn't doesn't really need it, doesn't really care. Um, wonderful thing about Groovy is if I don't care either, I'm still prototyping this API. Whatever, def, it's fine. It'll it'll figure itself. Another nice thing about Groovy is we have a feature uh, from JavaScript called closures or from Java 1.8 called lambdas. We have them in Groovy too. Let's see those in action. Def uh, word array equals hello world. And yes, this does work. Uh, it's Groovy syntax. 
uh, word array dot each braces current parameter that print ln current and we should see hello world let's just delete that for right now we don't need that in this example on hello world you see we've created a lambda here I've also um, one interesting thing about Groovy is that you can call functions without um, print ln without the parentheses. You would normally would with um, Java, right? Java would say you absolutely have have to have this. Groovy says, in some cases, you don't. Uh, there are special rules around uh, this. Uh, I tend to only use it if I have like one parameter, uh, because this looks kind of weird. Uh, second param looks a little weird. Uh, I tend to, if I have more than one parameter, I tend to put uh, parentheses around that. Uh, see your local uh, Groovy language reference guide about uh, the rules around that, but you can do it. In fact, that's what I do here. Uh, word array dot each. You could write this in your head as this, as each is a method that takes a closure, and each time the loop happens, we're calling this the implementation of a closure. All right, the code inside it, getting past the current object, and we'll print that out. Um, another interesting thing about, thing about Groovy is that some things that are buried deep inside the JDK namespaces, like println, are mm, just magically import starred for us. Um, Ta-da! It's, it's, it is more convenient. So we've got this uh, little bitty uh, no, this is a different syntax than Java 1.8. Go back to our Jenkins file. We can actually start to break this down. We've got a pipeline method here, right? We're using the declarative syntax and pipeline methods. So we can see we got pipeline, which must be some kind of function that Jenkins gives us, that takes a closure. There's an agent method that takes some kind of any parameter. We've got a tools method and a Node.js method, uh, so on and so forth. Stages must be a method, or that's how I would do it, just to make it easy. Stage is a method that actually takes two parameters, right? Uh, checkout and uh, closure. Uh, closure is the one thing that you can do this kind of syntax with. This is actually would look like that if you wanted to rewrite it, uh, but Groovy allows you to bend the rules a little bit in this case of closures. Um, and we got some steps and some... It's also worth noting in the pass, uh, Groovy attempts to have named parameters. By that I mean we can do uh, hello world name Ryan, uh, last name Wilcox. Uh, and we can, if we write def hello world, uh, we can take a def, which is args, and that should work. Print ln args. We should be able to execute that bit of code here. map looking thing right and here what it is I know in fact uh, that we can do uh, groovy let's just args dot get uh, let's just do things like name here 
normally you would need to figure out what the uh, method on hash map is to do something like get name. It's been a while for me writing Java, so that may be the right method name or maybe not. In Groovy, it will automatically for hash map for example, and for other things, will automatically um, figure out that you mean the key of the hash map instead of a method on the hash map object, right? Uh, so that's that's super cool, right? I can just print args, and I get my my name right there. That's kind of cool. Um, thus explains. Um, I guess we don't use it here. Oh yes, we do. Here, the Node.js uh, plugin for Jenkins uses this kind of keyword argument thing, so that I can say what the Node installation name is, and I want to do Node 811, and what the config ID is uh, for the Jenkins config, uh, so I can give it a, a proper config file with my uh, username and password, and if I have an internal nexus or a uh, so this is a function call with two name parameters, right? And that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, uh, another thing that comes up occasionally uh, oh, is, uh, and I use it quite a lot, hello world, uh, is uh, interpolated strings. Uh, so I can do this right in the middle of a string. And see that is inside the um, dollar sign in the curly braces is is groovy code, is value as groovy code. So I could create that print out to the console Ryan screencast very easily with just um, the double quotes. It is important. Double quotes versus single quotes do matter in Groovy. Uh, single quotes will not give us what we want at all in this particular case. Um, let's see. It will not evaluate the things in the, the dollar sign. See? Uh, so it's worthy to know that uh, if you're going to do string interpolation, you need the double quotes. If you're interacting with JDK methods, you may need to do that two string or use single quotes to um, because of compile errors. For the most part, however, you can just use double quotes and it'll be fine. Um, the next interesting bit about Jenkins. Oh yes, in the Jenkins file we've got our pipeline and we can declare methods like we have below, right? Oh look, sh is another uh, method that takes a single parameter, right? Um, and that is pretty much it for a very basic crash course on what is just enough groovy so I can understand it to modify this groovy script that I am trying to write here. sh um, ls-la script. Goodbye.